Can I welcome you to this short reflection and service of Compline, which has been prepared for Wednesday of Holy Week. First, a reading from the Gospel of Luke. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And a woman of the city, who was a sinner, having learned that he was eating in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisee, who had invited him, saw it, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus spoke up and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he replied, speak. A certain creditor had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he cancelled the debts for both of them. Now, which one of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he cancelled the greater debt. And Jesus said to him, You have judged rightly. Then, turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven, loves little. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Hello, I've been asked for a brief reflection on the anointing of Jesus, and I've decided to take Luke's account of it. I think Luke's version has something to say to us that is pertinent to Lent. Lent, a time of repentance. In Luke's account, Jesus was in dialogue with two people, a Pharisee and a woman. Both were noted for their moral standing. One is the good synagogue going upstanding pillar of society. His moral standards are impeccable and he knows it. The other is this woman. She's described as a sinner and the Pharisee inwardly criticises Jesus for allowing such a woman to eat so much as touch him. We're not told what her sin was, but people will make assumptions, won't they? The story that Jesus tells of cancelled debt brings into focus the attitudes of these two people. The Pharisee's opinion of himself is that he's okay. His life is so good that yes, he might have done a few things wrong and he might need a bit of repentance and forgiveness, but he's not that bad, really. In fact, he's almost the best there is. People look up to him as a model of good living. So if he needs forgiving at all, it would only be for little things. The woman, on the other hand, appears to be fully aware of her moral position and of her brokenness. Whatever the behaviour was that she was caught up in, I would suggest that she was broken by it, possibly isolated because of it, remorseful, but trapped in it. 
She may have been in a self-destructive cycle from which she had no escape. With Lent in mind, what we find in these two people is contrast. We find contrast in attitudes and awareness. We find contrast in their honesty and willingness to face the truth. The truth that they were both broken people. Theologians have a special word for this brokenness. It's sin. But sin, or brokenness, is our failing to be fully human or failing to be completely God's image bearers, the way he intended. What we call sin is actually symptoms of the fact that we're broken image bearers. What this woman did reveals her awareness of her brokenness and her sorrow in the face of her true condition. The Pharisee, on the other hand, seems oblivious of his brokenness and rather than being sorry for it, he levels accusations at the woman. Part of the Pharisee's brokenness was that he couldn't see or wouldn't admit to his brokenness, which suggests he was actually in a worse place than the woman. Facing the truth about ourselves is hard, yet it's not until we reach the place of honesty with ourselves and with God that we can then receive God's forgiveness and healing, his remaking, so that we become closer to being fully, more fully human, more like Christ, in other words. During this Lent, perhaps we could recognise that part of our brokenness is to fail to see how broken we are. Perhaps then we could ask God to show us something of what we're really like. That would take courage, because if you're anything like me, it's not a pretty sight. We could carry on like the Pharisee and cloak ourselves in the appearance of high standards, of superior religious practices, of impeccable moral standards, and like him, fail to perceive that ours is a broken image. Or we could be like the woman who has her sinfulness constantly before her, who has probably been openly castigated for being a sinner, who knows only too well how low she is stooped. We could be like her and come weeping to Jesus. We could be like the wealthy, good living Pharisee who abstained from even basic courtesy. Or we could be like the woman who went beyond the call of duty and lavished Jesus with costly ointment. Which is the more Lent like? The frugal abstinence of the religious or the lavish overflowing of the repentant? This Lent, what this Gospel account helps me with is to see the possibility that I might not even be aware of much of my failing to be fully human. And so I need to ask God to show me first of all my sin so that I can repent of it fully. I speak here in terms of myself because before I can preach at others, I need to have walked that path first. But my prayer and encouragement to you is that we all take time this Lent to acknowledge to God that our brokenness might mean we fail to see it. That we ask God to kindly and gently show us and lead us to repentance. And you know what follows repentance? Forgiveness. And what follows forgiveness more than anything is the outpouring of love in response to that extravagant, unrestrained love of the one who first loved us and gave himself for us. Amen. God bless. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth.
most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. Verses from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in shale, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the furthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you, and the night is as bright as the day. For darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Zechariah. I will pour out a spirit of compassion and supplication on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that when they look for the one whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him, as one mourns for an only child, and weep bitterly over him, as one weeps over a firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. 
into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. We say together the words of the Nuptimittis. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. In the peace of this evening, let us pray to our Father, who knows us, loves us and forgives us. Lord Jesus, when you walked with us on earth, you spread your healing power, and we place into your loving care all those who we know and who we care for this evening, and who we know are affected by illness or disease. All those who are lonely or struggle, all those who are fearful, Holy God, keep us strong in faith, hope and love. Bring relief to our sick, console our bereaved, and protect those who care for us. We lift our prayer to you, Lord, and trust in your infinite mercy as we wait for the daybreak. Amen. And let us this night give thanks Give thanks for the hope that is before us. Give thanks for the love that is poured out. Give thanks as we witness spontaneous acts of kindness. Give thanks for all those who applaud those who work tirelessly to care for us. Holy God, we bring before you in our hearts a spirit of thankfulness for your love your compassion, your healing, and for all that is good. Almighty God, as we stand at the foot of the cross of your Son, help us to see and know your love for us, so that in humility, love and joy, we may place at his feet all that we have and all that we are, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the night is at hand, and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. 
May God bless us, that in us may be found love and humility, obedience and thanksgiving, discipline, gentleness and peace. Amen.